Pokemon Stats crew, it's Mr. C here, and I'm just making a video to help out with question four of the module five analysis assignment, uh, just in case you're having some trouble with the simulation component of it. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to apologize in advance. My kids are uh, playing in the room right above mine, so if you hear any background noise, uh, that's probably them just being hashtag cray. Uh, so just bear with me. <laughs> Thank you in advance. Um, okay, <clears throat> so. I'm going to uh, show you how to, uh, first of all, generate some random numbers um, and uh, some of the other things that are required uh, in the Excel uh, program for you to do this analysis. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go to a Blackboard, the Technology Corner link. We want to go to Module 2, and I'm going to scroll down and copy this formula. Now I'm going to go back into Excel and in the formula bar here I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to change this 10. Um, the problem that I'm basing <coughs> this video on wants me to generate random numbers between 1 and 1931. So what I'm going to do is change this 10 to 1931 or 1931. Go ahead and press enter. Uh, of course, you want to use your prescribed uh, maximum random number, but uh, once you have that tweaked, you can press enter. And then what you'll do is highlight that cell. And um, also in your problem, it should tell you uh, to drag your formula down to a specific value. For me, the specific value is 3,186. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is uh, probably just pause the video. Uh, I know it, it'll probably be painstaking to watch me drag it down that far, but I'm gonna pause the video and then um, just drag it down and, and then I'll, I'll pick back up from uh, that point on. So uh, see you in a sec. All right, so I have Drag the formula down all the way to 3,186. And what I'm going to do is um, <clears throat> scroll back. Uh, actually, you know, I'm going to highlight that just by clicking into it. And now what we're going to do is uh, go to the very bottom right corner. Uh, we kind of see that little green box there. Uh, left click on that. And, and we're going to drag this all the way over to column T so that we have uh, 20 columns of 3,186 randomly generated values. So this is uh, done it in a lickety split. And what I'd like to do is copy all these values and insert them into a second sheet in Excel um, by virtue of the paste values option. Uh, that way they don't keep changing up on us. So what I'm going to do is just click on the copy icon and then down here I'm going to add a sheet to and then I'll go up to the paste drop down menu and select paste values and there we have it. Those are all the values from sheet one and uh, they're not going to be changing on us so they're, they're static. Uh, what you want to do here is, uh, from here on, is just sort each of these columns from smallest to largest. I typically do it individually. So for example, if I wanted to sort column A from smallest to largest, I just click on A. And then I go to the sort and filter option, click that, and I go sort from smallest to largest. I'm going to select continue with the current selection. And there we have it, it's sorted out. I'm going to go to column B, sort and filter, smallest to largest, current selection, and sort. I'm pretty sure it, it probably works uh, just as easily if you just select it all and, and do sort from smallest to largest. So, um, <clears throat> But I just like to do it individually just to, just to be sure that uh, it'll do it and I don't run into any hiccups. Um, so, you know, you'll have to go ahead and do that with the remaining columns all the way through column T. And I want to look at column A and B. Uh, we'll start with column A. 
Uh, in my problem, it says, let the numbers one through four represent um, people that have experienced nosebleeds. So, that, so that's my specific illness that's prescribed in my problem. Um, what you wanna do, you know, uh, what, what I would wanna do to uh, take a look at that, say in column A, is just look for any number ones, number twos, number threes, and number fours. And when you have it sorted from small to large, it, it's pretty easy to do that. Uh, let's see, I have a couple ones, a couple twos, and a couple fours. Uh, so it looks like six people experienced nosebleeds in that particular simulation. Looking at co column B, I got four twos, a three, and a four. That's, again, six people that experienced nosebleeds. Let's take a look at column C. I'll sort that from smallest to largest. And here it's a little bit different. I've got a couple ones, got a bundle of twos, a three, and three fours. So it looks like in this simulation, 11 people experience nosebleeds. So that's how you're gonna wanna keep track of how many people develop the illness. Uh, you know, with your particular problem, it might not be let numbers one through four represent the illness, but it could be something like one through two or one through three, um, or even one through five. But my problem is trying to address this question. Um, is 18 a reasonable amount of people that would have experienced, you know, the illness? Uh, in this case, nosebleeds. And, and what I'm trying to do in a problem such as this is, you know, after I sorted all my columns and counted all the number of people that represent nosebleeds, uh, is, see, is try to see if 18 is an easily attainable number uh, just based on doing this simulation. Um, it's kind of like, is it, is it uh, likely for, somebody, for 18 people to develop nosebleeds just by random chance? So that, that's kind of the idea here. All right, so I'll leave that uh, to you guys uh, with, with your particular uh, prescribed numbers and illnesses. Uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. Uh, if, if you have any questions about it whatsoever, uh, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you.